the Milky Way, our home galaxy. The name describes the galaxy's appearance from Earth, a hazy band of light seen in the night sky. Galileo Galilei first resolved the band of light into individual stars with his telescope in the 17th century. Now we know it is estimated to contain 100 to 400 billion stars and at least that number of planets. Right next to it, you can see the small and large Magellanic Clouds, two irregular dwarf galaxies orbiting the Milky Way. The Magellanic Clouds have been known since ancient times to indigenous people. The first preserved mention of the large Magellanic Cloud is believed to be in petroglyphs and rock drawings found in Chile. When we look a bit to the left, we can find Andromeda Galaxy, the nearest major galaxy to the Milky Way. It is visible to the naked eye from Earth on moonless nights. Andromeda is about 2.5 million light years away, so the light we see was emitted 2.5 million years ago when humans began using primitive stone tools and the Stone Age began. The other small light dot we can recognize is the Triangulum Galaxy. It is thought to be a satellite galaxy of Andromeda and possibly harboring 40 billion stars, which is not that much compared to the 1 trillion stars of Andromeda. But now let's fly inside the Milky Way. On the bottom, you can see our flight speed. These velocities are of course totally unrealistic, but we would need ages if we traveled at the speed of light. The distances out here are simply enormous. Our destination is the galactic center of the Milky Way. Its central massive object is a supermassive black hole of about 4 million solar masses, which is called Sagittarius A. It is almost exactly at the galactic rotational center. Sagittarius A is approximately 26,000 light years away from Earth. In fact, Earth can be found on one of the Milky Way galaxy's outlying spiral arms, the Orion Cygnus arm to be precise. slowly entering the stellar halo of the Milky Way. The halo extends far outside a galaxy's brightest regions and typically contains its oldest and most metal poor stars. It contains globular clusters like Messier 19 you can see here. Most of these stars tend to be greater than 12 billion years old. Closer to entering the galactic disk, a volume of stars that are mainly orbiting the galactic core in the same plane. Data from ESA satellite Gaia shows that the warped galactic disk of the Milky Way processes or wobbles similarly to the motion of a spinning top. The warp moves around the center of the Milky Way, completing one rotation in 600 to 700 million years. recognize the galactic center. Within a radius of one light year around Sagittarius A, there are around 10 million stars located. Although most of them are old red giant stars, the galactic center is also rich in young and massive stars of type O and B. They seem to have all been formed in a single star formation event a few million years ago. The existence of these relatively young stars was a surprise because the tidal forces from the central black hole were expected to prevent their formation. We are 
coming closer and closer to Sagittarius A. The observations of several stars orbiting Sagittarius A have been used to determine the mass and upper limits on the radius of the object. Based on mass and increasingly precise radius limits, astronomers have concluded that Sagittarius A must be the central supermassive black hole of the Milky Way galaxy. The current value of its mass is around 4 million solar masses. In May 2022, astronomers released the first image of the accretion disk around the horizon of Sagittarius A, confirming it to be a black hole using the Event Horizon Telescope, a worldwide network of radio observatories. Another way the black hole nature of an object may be tested is gravitational lensing. The deformation of space-time around a massive object causes light rays to be deflected such as light passing through an optic lens. A possibility for observing gravitational lensing by a black hole would be to observe stars orbiting the black hole. There are several candidates for such an observation in orbit around Sagittarius A. Inside the accretion disk you can see the event horizon. Often this is described as the boundary within which the black hole's escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. However, a more detailed description is that within this horizon, all paths that light could take are warped so as to fall farther into the hole. So the event horizon generally represents the boundary in space-time between events inside the horizon that cannot send signals to the distant universe. As you approach the event horizon, the light from other stars and galaxies would be blue-shifted Gravity also changes the passage of time itself. The stronger the force of gravity, the slower time passes. As you watch the universe around you speed up, people in the distance watch you in slow motion. If you were floating just outside the event horizon, at the photon sphere, you would probably see the back of your own head, as the light travels from your back around the black hole to your eyes. Inside the event horizon, space and time are horribly broken. The theories we have cannot be observed from outside and might be wrong. But it is also okay to not know everything.